And then I'm asking, tomorrow we celebrate all Kanazi Senya Blockchain for Social Good Social Council. Shilin Bido Ma Be Pya Pare. Honorable distinguished guests, now our speakers, CEO of 360 at Dollar Lawi, and Director of Blockchain Innovation, Dr. Gregory Sandstrom, we're going to deliver it about the blockchain for social good. Before we present and invite the speakers, I would like to introduce the biography of our speaker. Dollar Lawin is on a mission to democratize education, promote 21st century learning skills, and student center pedagogy in classrooms by leveraging virtual reality and augmented reality technology. After completing a public administration master's degree at Harvard Kennedy School of Government, she started running an educational technology venture based out of the NSA Nasser Research Center in Silicon Valley. Dolala, now heads of the Myanmar office and works on ad tech projects dedicated to bringing scalable, immediate, and exponential impacts in transforming national education and beyond. Our next speaker, Dr. Gregory Sandstone, is the writer of blockchain innovation at the educational technology company 360 at Inyango, Myanmar. He turned his research focus to blockchain in 2016 while an associate professor at the European Humanities University and affiliated associate professor at the Social Innovation Laboratories, Michaelis Romeris University in Lithuania. After moving back to his home country, Canada, he became the co-host of the Hyperledger Ottawa Blockchain Group before coming to Yango in August 2017. He also attended the Blockchain Government Forum in Ottawa in June 2017 and is found co-founding member of the Velniers Blockchain Community. In order to deliver the Blockchain for Social Good title, I would like to honorably invite CEO of 360 at Dollar Lawi and Director of Blockchain Innovation, Dr. Gregory Sandstone, to be on stage. May I have your presence? So uh, I have the honor to present uh, first, uh, and then uh, Lala Wynn will follow on the topic of uh, blockchain technology. And there's the slide up uh, are there already. So I came to Myanmar and have been interested in blockchain technology. And uh, 360 Ed is a company with uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. And the combination of these two technologies is fantastic. Uh, but in this short introduction, I'm going to talk about a little bit about what blockchain is for those who are not familiar with it and some of the key features and then how it has implications for Myanmar uh, as well as uh, anywhere else in the world at this point in time. So the first question uh, often we're asked what is blockchain? So we can see the definition, a couple of definitions here. So it's a, a spreadsheet, it's a digital ledger uh, that cannot be corrupted. Uh, that are focused on transactions. So the transactions are what happen in the blocks that make up the blockchain. Uh, it's programmed, uh, the, the blocks are programmed and coded, and it's supposed to be able to account for anything of value and importance. And this is a controversial question. A second definition, somewhat similar, but adding some features, it's an online record keeping system. Uh, there's a network of computers involved, again transactions, but it adds that there's a cryptographic component. And this is the key addition to uh, some of the earlier technologies we can say uh, in, in finance uh, as well. So if you want to boil it down in short, what is blockchain? This to me is the shortest and easiest way to say what it is. Blockchain is the transition from a single ledger accounting system to what we had was a double entry accounting system, which depending where you were, 10th century or 14th century. Then only in the 1980s, it was a Japanese American professor of accounting uh, who coined the term triple entry accounting. So we had single entry, double entry, triple entry, and triple entry is where there's a public ledger 
In addition to the two people involved in a transaction, there was a third transaction, which was the public. And now the next stage is the blockchain technology, which I like to call M-Ledger technology, which is spreading it out to an entire network of computers. M computers on a network is the number of uh, ledgers that are involved, and everybody gets a copy of the ledger. So in short, what this is showing us, and connects with what the past speaker was saying, a transition from a paper economy to a digital economy. The borders are different. The speed is different at which you can make a transaction. Uh, one might compare it to the history of the Dow Jones as we move into digital currencies now as well. The top image is from the uh, famous crash of the uh, 29 and 30. Uh, and then uh, the bottom is the history of the uh, Dow Jones. And you can see that crash there, but uh, in the long run, of course, the market recovered and uh, is uh, a lot higher today. If we can compare that, uh, is this the new Dow Jones or global stock market of digital currencies? What we're seeing, some predict these will all be gone in just a few years. Others think some of these will be around for 50 years. Is this the new stock market, the digital currency stock market? In short, the definition uh, is, can be encapsulated here in this uh, slide deck, but I'd like you to look at the bottom specifically, why blockchain, what is it used for? And you can see four main topics. They're lowering costs, increasing transparency, uh, greater security and faster settlement. So this would be the logic of why would we use it. And you can see that there are different categories uh, for how it's used. So it's a distributed ledger, uh, and you have smart contracts, which are basically digital contracts, which are executed uh, based on agreements by parties who would enter into any type of transaction. And obviously, uh, finance and microfinance has got on quite early into this field because it's so important to have those agreements, that it's time stamped, that it can't be changed, that it's spread out onto an entire network. If we want to look very specifically at the uh, financial services, this is the CTO of uh, Moeda, which is a community or a cooperative banking initiative. There are already a number of uh, companies that have formed in the uh, fintech uh, industry, which are focused specifically on blockchain. Uh, it's more than just financial services. This is the key message. Uh, it's, it's more about the identity. It's not just a credit score. Credit score may be the lowest common denominator but there are all these other scores as a citizen. Uh, and again, if you have these Facebooks or Googles, which are centralized information hubs, they get in the way of interoperability between us because they hold the information, we don't hold the information. So behind all of this, this transition, is who controls the information, who has your information and my information, and how much control do we have over that? China is taking steps in this uh, area, uh, and it's already been since 2015. They're, they've been uh, developing a, a, a game, a social credit game. Uh, this one that you can see here is called Sesame Credit. Um, and of course, there are positive reasons to have this. You have a lot of people who don't have credit. Okay, let's get them into credit. And because the media companies and Alibaba and WeChat collect all this information, uh, let's plug it in and that'll be part of your credit score. But there's a danger in this as well that it becomes uh, behavioral conditioning on the national level. We want you to behave this way so we'll give you points on your reputation score if you behave a certain way. So there are new values and this question of what are the values that can be counted in the blockchain is a very important one. So the way that I like to look at it is in some sense, it's the old economy to the new economy, if this is a radical break, uh, but it's still the digital economy. The blockchain is one step as part of a number of changes that are happening in the, in the digital economy. 
Stellar is one of the leading uh, companies in microfinance already. I think it's the ninth largest cryptocurrency right now uh, by volume. Uh, it says it's developing a world's new financial system. They're not shy about saying this kind of thing. Uh, the ICSO Foundation, uh, it talks about being an impact economy. So social impact is often discussed in the blockchain space. Uh, it's based in South Africa. Humanic, uh, again, empowering the unbanked. We hear un uh, banking the unbanked very often. And again, proposing a next generation model of financial services. A few that are still newer now and not as established, but growing rapidly uh, are BangQ and Sweetbridge. And particularly on the topic of identity, and, and Lala will speak further about that uh, uh, next, uh, be your own bank. Uh, again, the language is very direct speaking. It's a different language than used to happen in the past. Okay. And one, we won't talk about the history. We don't have much time to go, so I'll skip on. Uh, when did the uh, financial institutions start getting into this? There's a basic map. Pretty much everybody now is either using blockchain, it is being used, or they're experimenting how to use it. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when and how. Uh, and so you can see some of those. Uh, the ICO craze uh, really only took off in 2017. It began in 2013, but Ethereum is now the, is the second largest coin. Uh, that was 2014, and you see it exploding. I would guess it's around uh, 2 billion, so still going up and will plateau uh, in the year or two. Uh, locally here, uh, we have at the top uh, these ICOs. There's a lot of worry, uh, a new way of fundraising. Uh, ExoCoin was proposed in Myanmar as the first ICO. Uh, very questionable, but the focus was on refugees. Social impact, doing good. But behind the white paper, there's a lot of questions that those of us who study blockchain have. So it's very important. Which is the first ICO in Myanmar? Is it clear, is it transparent, is everybody involved on the level? This is very important, I cannot stress that enough. Otherwise, there are dangers like what's happened in China with the closure of the ICOs. And one more, please. Uh, so the use cases, that will be uh, the next uh, uh, presentation. Uh, so there are a lot of different areas. Oh, excellent, thank you. Uh, so it's, it's basically a general purpose technology that can be applied across a, a, a range of sectors and industries, much like the internet. It's not just for one sector, it's for many, uh, and uh, it will be talking about education in particular and uh, national identity in the next one. Uh, here in Myanmar, the question I would like to ask is, what will be the specific blockchain contribution here, and what will be borrowed from elsewhere? There's over a million hours have gone into programming for Hyperledger, a million hours. No country can duplicate this. So what will Myanmar bring? What's new coming from here? And there's lots of opportunities. So the uh, telecoms and banks and fintech don't fight. That will slow this down. If there's fighting, there's a problem with regulations, etc. cetera. Uh, it has great leapfrog potential for digital enterprise uh, and helping youth as well. Uh, there's already blockchain active here in Myanmar, BC Finance, uh, Deloitte uh, uh, and others. Uh, micro money here as well uh, with Everex. Uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, and uh, the key to me here is the interoperability, some kind of standardization where you can have uh, the currency uh, exchanged across uh, different platforms uh, and different uh, tele telecom uh, uh, providers. We're basically now at 1995, roughly, the history of the internet, the history of the blockchain. It's very early. So uh, we're very glad at 360Ed to move forward these workshops to, uh, on blockchain education. We had a great crowd this Saturday, so uh, please contact us. Be welcome to uh, suggest ideas, and we're building, and we're uh, growing, and glad to be working on the blockchain. And, uh, 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 Lala, the head of 360, will come and speak about some of the opportunities and ways we're working forward on this. Thank you.